All right, welcome back to the KSR YouTube channel. We're gonna be working on Donnie's Mustang and show you guys kind of our process, or at least my process, for doing some of the wiring on it. Now, uh, a little bit of shop update to show you too. Check it out, they're all installed. Woohoo, four lifts up. All, uh, all installed. Only one works right now though, the, actually the lift where Donnie's car is at because my electrician buddy Ethan has come in today, hopefully to get a couple more of them wired up. I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to get them all done today or not, but it is progressing along to where we will hopefully have four functioning lifts by the end of the week. So once they get to where they're functioning, the, uh, the guys that install them have to come back and do some adjustments to balance them. Like one of the first things we noticed when we first used the lift that Donnie's car's in, they kind of picked up a little crooked. So they've got to come back and tweak the cables just a little bit, set the uh, the handles for the the release mechanism, and uh, not too much farther along, and we'll be completely done with the whole lift installation project. So we do want to epoxy the floors here, and actually CJ's digging out in the crack. Taking Kevin's crack. Okay, that's just weird, <laughs> but. We're gonna put some seam sealer in there, or some filler in there, some concrete filler, because sometimes when we're rolling cars across on these little dollies, they catch and they evacuate themselves from the vehicle. And that usually means they bind themselves up on the body of the car, damaging the car. Now we did it to my Cutlass the other day when we rolled it back and then, but on my car, it's not such a big deal. On something like that yeah that'd be a big deal so this thing is about to go down the road and get picked up by Lee we've got most of the little stuff worked out on it so the plans have kind of changed for it a little bit he um, is potentially selling this car so keep an eye out for it I'll let you guys know that more in the future if he uh, if he does decide to sell it if anybody wants a twin turbo Viper all right so let's go get to work on Donnie's car Right, so Donnie's Mustang. We've got wires everywhere. You can see I've already, which that size is not a great example because batteries are in, battery cables are there. But already gotten the harnesses done, at least for the coils and the injectors. And there's gonna be a quick disconnect firewall connector over there. Hold on a second, let's see if this helps. Oh, there we go. We've got some lights back here that uh, we rarely ever use, but when we do use them, it helps. At least doing underhood stuff. So quick disconnect firewall connector here. And then this is all coil power. There's also a plug for the injector down here that you can kind of see. And the reason there's a connector there is so that the intake manifold can be taken off with a quick quick disconnect with that connector there and then all the electrical stuff instead of having to take all these individually loose and get all that out of the way. But this, as well as a power wire from the injectors are gonna run down and over to this relay board because the battery ends up right here. So these wires are all going to be going through the main harness as well. And there's going to be this Deutsch connector somewhere hidden over here, not hidden really, but somewhere over here where it can be disconnected. And then with a snap of that connector, the engine will be able to come out with all of the wiring attached to it. So part of the planning for all of that is, I mean, like I've done here, you can see I've got that bundle of wires laying out. I'm about to run the wire over from the fuel pressure regulator, uh, start building the wires from the throttle body. And, you know, some people build their harnesses on a bench and measure it out, and I have done that before, and it, it does work. 
but I feel like when I do them on car, I can end up with, you know, a harness that's really like it, it just fits and flows a little nicer when I'm actually doing it on the vehicle. Might take a little bit longer to do it that way, but it's kind of how I like, I'd rather it look really nice at the end. Everything flow and do what it's supposed to do. But we are very near getting this thing ready to fire up. Look, it's pretty doggone close. We've got our radiator hoses done. Obviously got to do something with this wiring here, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. That's That wiring came with the car and it plugs into this connector here that has to do with the headlights. So, yeah, lots, lots and lots of work going on. And the ECU, like I mentioned in our last video, the shop video, ECU is actually mounted right there. So the harnesses are all gonna come down and run down the transmission tunnel underneath the center console. The transmission will have a quick connector on the bottom of it, you know, that snaps loose so you can just drop the transmission out. These, this is a box that communicates with the dash. This interprets the Holly can signal and then dumps it into the dash, as well as some of the other stuff that's gotta go in there. We also have to mount our EGT connector or our EGT information box, I guess you could say. Probably gonna put it somewhere in here so then we can route the EGTs. Let's see if I can roll over here. So you can see the EGT plate right there. So we've gotta still shorten each of the EGTs to go from the header down to or over to the this firewall plate here but uh yeah that's uh that's our project for the day will is back in the back working on a another bulkhead connector for the trailer wiring so the trailer light wires will be through here somewhere on a this bolt-on firewall connector i think it's going right in here drew's already Pulled this out of the harness. It'll go pin right into the back of that. And the idea for that is the trailer harness will be able to just be unplugged and pulled out of the car so it's not dangling underneath the car. And if he decides to do something different later down the road with the car and not run the trailer, just pull that off and away we go. So once we get done with that, we'll be able to put the rear bumper back on and get it all mounted up so these tabs here actually catch the bottom part of the bumper so that it's not just flapping in the breeze because we don't want that but yeah we got our work cut out for us hopefully get this thing a little bit further along today and get some of this wiring wrapped up so i'll do a voiceover of the time lapse and let you guys know which part i'm actually working on and then what i'm doing with uh all the different wiring stuff. All right, so like I mentioned before, we're gonna terminate all of the wires that are attached to the throttle body. So we have throttle position sensor, IAC motor for the idle air control motor. We have the manifold air temp right there. We have the manifold air pressure. And then we're tying that in to the coolant temp and the crank sensor that's at the, well, Actually, it's the crank, the camshaft sensor that's at the front of the engine on a Gen 4 LS. So doing all that so that we can get them terminated and routed together to the back of the intake to over where the, the plug is. So you kind of saw me with the tape measure because basically I'm measuring out and I'm completing the terminals for each connector. And once I have that connector populated... I will heat shrink eight to 10 inches of uh, all of the wires bundled together right at the connector. And then I will bring each connector harness, you know, from each of the sensors over to kind of a joint section. And then once they're out of the car, I will heat shrink the whole bundle together. So it's kind of in one loom 
until it gets really close to where it needs to go, comes out of the main bundle, and then plugs into each individual sensor. Kind of how I like doing it. It makes for a very clean harness, and uh, it, but it does take some time to go through and accomplish it because there's a lot of terminals and a lot of wiring to be completed for these engines. All right, well, now that I have made a good mess of everything, which it really does look like a mess right now, but we've got all of our sensors here wired. TPS, IAC, manifold air temp, which uh, I forgot the pins for that. So I just kind of temporarily did that for now. Map sensor is right there. Obviously the cam sensor is down behind the water pump and the coolant temp runs around under that, goes to there. So the reason these are just laid out here right now is Right now, the cam sensor is going all the way back under the intake, around and over to where our plug is gonna be. And what I'm gonna do now is pull everything out. And I know the length of the cam sensor wire is long enough. So then I can finish heat shrinking and looming all of the bundle of wires. Instead of threading them through the intake, I'll get them all wrapped into one single bundle and they'll go around and I still have to add oil pressure, which I will zip tie to the, or I'll, or I'll at least put a mark on where it lines up with the, uh, the cam sensor wire. And I also have to do the crank sensor. So I'm gonna wrap up at least the oil pressure and then I've gotta run it up in the air, loosen up the starter so I can snap on the, the, the crankshaft connector. I'll go ahead and pre-terminate that on a piece of the shielded, uh, three wire cable from Holly, and then we'll pull it out, heat shrink it, and then it will be done except for the firewall connector, which I can actually go ahead and terminate the firewall connector, at least on the this side of it, and then I'll worry about adding the chassis side of it once we get the harness run from the ECU. So I'm gonna get back to work, see what all I can knock out before the end of the day, and then. Uh, I'm going. All right, so I've run the car up in the air to plug on the crankshaft sensor, which for this particular car, and actually all LS engines, you really need to take the starter loose. Well, there's kind of a header in the way there, so that meant that I had to kind of loosen the header just a little bit so that it had a little bit of wiggle room so that I could get onto the starter bolts and get the starter loosened up to get it out of the way to get my arms up in there to snap the connector on all to just get the length right for where the crankshaft sensor is going to connect to the rest of the bundle and a lot of times what I do is I just put a sharpie mark um, where the wires are going to come together and where I want to heat shrink them kind of like you know where I step it up and I bundle them all together I just put a Sharpie mark on it and then I come back and align those Sharpie marks while I'm on the bench now with it. And I can then kind of bring the harness all together outside of the car. Like I said earlier, some people do this kind of pre-planning on a bench. I've done that once or twice and it did work okay, but I felt like there was some areas that, you know, when you're working on a single plane, like say on just a piece of plywood or even on the floor taped to a piece of cardboard or something, you can't get the all of the angles just right and you end up with kind of some extra loops in part of the loom or you end up with an area that's like extremely tight and it just it doesn't seem to work as good as, at least for me, as doing it on the engine itself. Like I said, that's my process. It works for me. You guys use whatever process works for you. And kind of once you get to working with these things, you know, you kind of will develop a process. And, you know, this stuff is tedious. But if you take your time and document everything that you're doing, not only will you be able to go back and double check the work that you've done, you'll have documentation of what you did so that six months down the road, if you decide you need to go back and add some more sensors or change something up, you know right which pins to go to and which color those wires may be, you know, in your main connector. 
And I mentioned before that there was a lot of connectors and connections to do. And I, I haven't totaled up an exact number, but it's somewhere between 250 and 300 individual connections that have to be made to complete an engine harness. So between the coils and the injectors, there's six connections per cylinder. The firewall connector was 47 pins, so that is 47 times 2. And as you can see, it gets busy in a hurry. All right, well, we're back at it the next morning. Not going to lie, I made a mistake last night. It made me mad, so I went home. It was already after hours, and uh, kinda, I guess I was getting tired from you know, a long day at it. So I decided to go home and start over again, make sure I was fresh this morning. So I guess one of the biggest tips I could say for you guys, if you're doing your own harness in any fashion, but especially when you're doing something through a firewall connector, like I've got every single pin written down, what its job is, and I'm also writing what the color of the wire, and then I do a check mark once it's located in the connector itself. So you can see we've started putting some pins in the connector itself. And I've got all these left to do. And then this harness will be done. And that's pretty exciting. But then I have to do the other side of it to connect from the firewall to the ECU. You know, so that's how these things go. Just keep chipping away at it until it's done. So I got a pretty good bit of work to do this morning to try and get this thing wrapped up completely. Then I'll show you guys the final harness layout on the engine, and that'll probably wrap up this video. We'll move on to something else for the next video because this video is probably already getting a little bit long. So let's get at it again and see if we can wrap this thing up. So like I had mentioned in the last time lapse, this is a 47 pin connector at the firewall and there is no big power that particularly goes through this connector. I branched out the coil powers and the ignition power to the relay that was right over by the battery because it didn't make any sense for me to run, you know, large power, I'll call it, you know, like from a relay into the car by the ECU only to run it right back out to the engine. So we mounted that uh, Leash Electronics six uh, position or six relay little micro uh, relay board over there under the battery. And each bank of coils has its own relay. And then the injectors have their own relay so that, you know, we have fuse protection for each of those areas. And if there's ever a problem, well, it's easier to diagnose instead of just the entire engine shutting off like with the coils for example so that would shut the engine off but i've never had an injector actually fail yet enough to trip the uh the fuse typically just the one injector goes down and things kind of quit you lose one cylinder things kind of quit working and that one cylinder goes down and you can easily trace it back to the injector being locked up or clogged or something so lots and lots of work to pin this ECU connector or firewall connector. And you'll see in a second that I've got my reader glasses on again because 47 pins inside of about an inch and a quarter inch diameter circle, the numbering beside each pin hole is very small. And I would like to make sure that I am placing the correct pin in the correct hole so that when we do the other side, everything lines up and the car cranks up just like there was no problem or no break in the connection at all. So, you know, this is definitely a tedious process, but I don't feel like it's a very hard process to do. It just does take time and you have to focus on, you know, getting each of the wires in their right location. And that's basically the hardest part of it. And, you know, I've, I get most of my wiring supplies, like all these connectors came from wire care. Same with uh, the crimpers and the, the Deutsch pin or the Deutsch connectors that I use. Get all those from wire care. They've got a really good assortment of different connectors. 
as well as their Deutsch assembly tool. So you can actually build a complete connector instead of having to piece together, you know, you need the, the male shell plus the pins plus the locks plus everything else. Well, you just select how many cavities you want and then it'll give you the different options for that number of cavities. And it's a really nice way to work it out. I think it's brilliant and it makes it a lot easier for when you're trying to assemble or put together your connector for your specific needs. So anyway, you can see now I'm actually working on the injector harness, getting those brought out of the harness because they are separate from the main harness that connects to the engine. And they're going to get branched out so that you can still remove the intake from the car without having to unplug each individual injector. So basically, to take the intake off, you will disconnect the sensors up by the throttle body and then unplug the injector connector and then the whole thing pops off. So that's kind of wrapping this up. You can see I'm kind of playing with the final heat shrink uh, boot that's going to turn the thing 90 degrees at the firewall. And then we'll show you guys what it looks like here in just a second. All right, well, and this is what we've got to show for at least a partial day's work because I had to go to my oldest daughter's graduation from uh, fifth grade today. She's actually moving up to school, so congrats to her. But kind of cut into my day of wrapping this job up, and I really want to get this video out. It's like I said earlier, it's probably already a little long. But this is what it looks like before heat shrinking. So I've got kind of a joint here that's got all of the five volts. So there's a single five volt that comes out of here and loops over into this. And then all of the five volt sensor uh, supply is into this one connector here and it's heat shrinked off. Same with uh, the grounds right here. Got them done that way. I could have done, so this is like a logic ground for all the coils, this black with the yellow stripe right there. I could have done those the same way, but didn't. And I know there's tons of different people who do this tons of different ways. This is kind of my way of doing it. It's worked for me. You know, if it works for you, hopefully you can use it. But uh, yeah, hopefully tomorrow we'll have this thing wrapped up and then I get to start on the chassis side of it, as well as the transmission harness, which you can see is gonna go through right there. So we've got ECU mounted over there. Gotta connect to that. We also have to connect to the EGT box, which is right there. And you can just see the EGTs hanging right there in the floor but they're going to plug up to the plates that are down here below the headers. Well, on this side, it's right here. So it's above the header on this side. And then on the other side, it's down a little bit lower because that's where we had to go to clear the AC box. Sometimes working around existing components on cars can really throw you for a loop and give you a challenge. But just make yourself a list and keep checking things off. Like I've got a pretty big list on this thing because a week from now, well, a week from when this is being filmed, we hope to be on the dyno with it. Getting very close. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but we're getting very close. But that's gonna wrap up this video. Appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. See you guys next time.